we're going to talk about all of the events of one heartbeat. This is known as the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle. You should be familiar with all the events of one heartbeat because you've studied it in lecture and we've even talked about heartbeats in lab. You know that first thing that happens is the atria contracts, right? We're talking mechanically now. Atria push blood which way? Down. What chambers receive that blood? Ventricles. They do what with it? Contract and push the blood up, closing certain valves and opening others and sending that blood free out of the heart so that the right side can go to the lungs and the left side can go to the whole body, correct? Then blood flow returns back to the heart and it starts all over again. That's it, we're done. However, we have to get fancy. We have to get technical and we have to put some names on the steps. You have a picture that looks like this in your book. It's still not blown up big enough, to be honest with you. But when you find that picture, look at the bottom here. Notice how many little hearts do you see across the bottom? Notice, what, is, what are they calling this first heart? What are they calling the last heart? What have they done? They've copied. The first and the last step are the same. So what I'm telling you is when we do this, we will only have five steps. All right? When we talk about the events of one heartbeat, Logically, the way that our mind works is we think of the atria contracting and pushing blood down, correct? Can you tell me, of all the six hearts there, which one is that? Very good. That's the second one. No, it doesn't have a two by it. It's just this one right here, but it is the second one. We can count. One, two. Here we are. This is where we will start. So we will go here, 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 and here. Now, you can look at these pictures. For the most part, I'm going to be drawing this, though. Okay? I know that you have this picture at home, wherever you are, in a book or pulled up, printed, so you can refer back to this. I'm going to draw because I want you to be able to draw these things. I want you to see what's going on. When we talk about the events, the mechanical events of one heartbeat, I'm always going to have a little heart hanging out here so we can look at it. Yeah, it's going to look funny. Oh, my goodness. But we know this is the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. This should be cake by now. The first step is called atrial systole. Systole means Contraction. You know the systolic pressure is the pressure in your blood vessels, specifically arteries, when your left ventricle is contracting. Atrial systole. What happens during atrial systole? The atria contract. The ventricles must be relaxed. Blood is moving which way? That's the way blood is moving. It is moving down into the ventricle. You can say that a lot of ways. What this step is doing is it's filling up the ventricles, right? Now tell me, is there a valve right here? Is there a corresponding valve on this one over here? What do we collectively call those valves? Good. Now you can abbreviate. We call those AV valves. And when the atria is in contraction and pushing blood down, these valves are in what position? Open or closed? These AV valves are open. 
Here's our little pulmonary trunk. Here's our little pulmonary semilunar valve. When blood is moving down into the ventricle, tell me about this pulmonary semilunar right here. It better be closed. Very good. It better be closed. Here's the heart muscle. So the semilunars are closed. For every single step of this cardiac cycle, one heart beat, the mechanical events, we will always talk about these five structures. The atria, the ventricles, the blood, the AV valves, and the semilunar valves for every step. First step was called atrial systole. See, all we're doing is we're getting a little fancy and detailed, putting a specific name on it, using fancy terminology to describe the very beginnings of a heartbeat where the atria contract and push blood down. AV valves are open, semilunar valves are closed, atria contracting, the ventricles better be relaxed. Step two. Step two is called isovolumetric ventricular either contraction or systole. It's your choice. I'm okay with both. You can see that our book uses contraction. So I've tended to start using contraction just to go with that. We really could say systole there because systole means contraction. So just based on the name, you guys tell me, based on the name, what's contracting? The ventricle. So let's not go too far yet. Let's stay with me, okay? What's contracting? The ventricle. So look here. Ventricle's contracting. Which way is the blood going? It's going up. It wants to go there. But when it's going up, it also goes up here, right? What does that do to this valve, that blood going up? It closes that valve. What's that valve's name? AV valves. So the AV valves are closed. This is the step that closes them. What is the ventricle doing? It is absolutely positively contracting. What are the atria doing? They are relaxing. By the way, what's happening on the left side of the heart? Exactly correct, Stephanie. The exact same thing. What is blood doing? So check this out, guys. This phase is when the ventricle begins contraction and pushes blood up but not yet out. It snaps that valve shut. It gets right to here, but it has not pressurized enough to pop that valve open. So at this brief moment, the semilunar is still shut or closed. Okay? Usually I say closed. I just chose to say shut there. It is closed. So perfect, Reed. Blood is moving up, but not out of the ventricle, right? It's being pressurized, but it's not moving out. Can we say that it is correct that all valves are closed? Yes. Is it also fair to say that both atria are relaxed and the ventricles are contract, and that blood is not moving out of the heart. Right. So here's what happens. On this side, blood moves up here at the same time. It closes that off. Blood moves up here to the aortic semilunar valve that's behind the pulmonary semilunar we know in reality. It gets to that valve, but not yet enough pressure to push it out. And then all of a sudden, the pressure exceeds the pressure in the tubes, and boom, it opens both of those valves. As soon as those valves open, we're no longer in step two. We're now in step three, so we have to change it. 
we like step three. Step three is called ejection. That's it. <laughs> so simple one word. Tell me, what are the ventricles doing? They are still in contraction. This begins as soon as the semilunars open. It is this phase that opens them. Semilunars are opened. The ventricle contracting and pushing blood up began in the last step, and as soon as the valves open, we're now in step three. Notice this is just a time thing, right? This is just as the pressure builds, then the valves pop open. And they've just chosen to label it like this. While the ventricle is contracting, the atria must be relaxing. Since this is called ejection, the blood is... Yes. Oh, I like the way you said that. Moving. Out of what? Out of the ventricle. I didn't say you didn't, sir. Moving out of the ventricle. And describe for me, please, as blood is moving up here, what are our little AV valves doing? They are still closed. They remain closed. Do you see how I don't always do the five things in the same order? Right? We use our brains logically because we already know how the heart works. So when we start with the ejection... We say as blood's being pumped out of the semilunar valves, those are open. What's pushing it out? Ventricular contraction. When the ventricle's contracting, the atria better be relaxed, and the AV valves must be closed. Okay? And that's that. It's so cool. And then we're ready for step four. Step four is going to look familiar. It's going to start with the word isovolumetric. Okay, I didn't take the time to explain this earlier. It's kind of understood, but not if you don't know the language. Volumetric refers to the amount of blood in a chamber, the volume of blood in the chamber. Iso always means equal, very good, equal, the same. So isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. You could throw the word diastole on there instead of relaxation. I usually don't, guys. I, I call this isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Here's what it means. The ventricle is in, but that's tough, relaxation. Notice, the hardest part of this for each of you is naming, naming it. Because we didn't learn it like that. We learned what happens in the heart, where it goes, what the flow is. You know that. You just have to put names on it now. When the ventricle is relaxed, blood is no longer being pushed out here. So this valve can snap shut, and this valve can snap shut. What are those valves called? Semilunars. This is the step that closes them. They are closed because the blood quit flowing out, because the ventricle was relaxed. So blood is not leaving the ventricle. Actually, in this step, no blood is flowing through the chambers, right? No blood is leaving. The AV valves are still closed as well. They remain closed. And yes, our atria are also relaxed. This is the step of total heart relaxation. All valves closed, no blood flowing. This is your eight hours of sleep for your heart. Every second it gets a little one of these, where everything rests, where everything rests, where everything rests, where everything rests. rests. Isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Why? Because the blood that's in here, that's left in here, is just now sitting in here. The blood that exited is now out here and moving along its way, along its path, but these valves are shut. And these valves are shut. No fluid moving in or out of the ventricles. I guess it's time for step five. Step five is called passive ventricular. And I hate the fact that they took the word passive off there. 
passive ventricular filling. That word passive is completely important to what's going on here. What does passive mean? Right. It means everything's relaxed in the heart. That means that both chambers are still relaxed. That means the heart is not doing work. But while these chambers are relaxed and while the heart's not doing work, don't we have these little things called blood vessels? Aren't they attached back to the heart? And isn't the body pushing blood back? Well, really, the heart pushed it out. It goes through the vessels. It goes from high to low. But it comes back to the heart, right? Now, because the heart has been at rest for a little brief microsecond, the blood that is in here, that is now in the atrium, builds up just a little pressure and pushes right through that valve. And blood now flows into the ventricles. The AV valves are opened in this step. And you bet those semi-luters better still stay shut because we don't want the blood leaving those chambers, right? I saved this step for last because it's so important and I want it to stick. If I did it at first, it would create confusion. So we start where we know. We start with the atria contracting and pushing blood which way? Down. And what valves are open when we do that? AV valves are open. Notice how I said that. They're already open because this last step opens them. This last step, the pressure in the heart opens up that valve and blood moves right through there. Is the atria doing any pushing? No, it is completely relaxed. It's the pressure coming from the blood vessels, from the body. Or really, if we're on this side of the heart, from the lungs. On the other side. And it pushes that chamber open and blood moves down into the ventricle. This is passive. The ventricles, by the way, this is so fascinating, guys. 80% of ventricular filling is passive right here. Most of the ventricle Filling up with blood is right here. What happens right after this? We start all over. The atria contract. And in atrial systole, I'll just write it here because it's starting all over again. The remaining 20% of the filling occurs. So most ventricular filling is passive. And then the atria just contract and top it off. I absolutely positively love to either ask questions about this or just flat out an essay question over the whole thing. You should own blood flow through the heart. If you own blood flow through the heart, you can also tell me what each chamber is doing and what each valve is doing and where the flow is going in each of these five steps. So this is a great thorough question to see how well you put it all together. These are the mechanical events of a heartbeat. That's why we use words contract and relax and systole and diastole. Are there electrical events that lead to this? And what words do we associate with the electrical events? Depolarization and repolarization. Atrial depolarization leads to atrial systole. So we could actually look back, check out how fun this gets. We could look back at a picture like this and go up from atrial contraction. This slide right here has everything on it. Oh my goodness, it's talking about pressure. It's talking about what's happening in the chambers. It's talking about the EKG. Look, it even puts the heart sounds right here. Atrial depolarization. Then the atria repolarizes and the ventricle depolarizes. When the ventricle depolarizes, it starts the contraction of the heart. The contraction of the heart in this phase pushes the blood up, which closes the first heart valve. There's your first heart sound. Then we get ventricular repolarization, right? Then it relaxes after that, and we get the closing. 
right at the beginning of the relaxation. It's really cool. Really, really cool. Pretty good picture. So here's showing us the electrical events. Here's showing us the mechanical events. Here's showing the pressure. And here's the heart sounds. All on one nice cool thing. I love these pictures down here because they show you blood flow with the little chambers. And really, most of our focus is on the ventricles here.